Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to another review. This time it's the Mizuno ST200 drivers. Now I've got all three. Uh, this is the standard ST200. The one that Mizuno think are gonna suit the masses. We've also got the G, which is a little bit more extreme in how you can move the movable weights to make it ultra low spin, etc. Then you've got the X, which is an interesting one. It's like the Uber forgiveness, a little bit draw biased. Yeah, that can be an interesting video because I've got an interesting shaft to test. Anyway, this one. The normal one that Mizuno think this is going to be the one that suits most people. Now, um, no movable technology at all when it comes to the head apart from the neck sleeve. Um, you've got a new face for 2020. The ST190, I believe, had beta rich titanium where this is full. Bathe titanium allows them to make the face 17% lighter, 8% stronger, or first, vice versa. Anyway, improvements in the face. Just basically means that they've made it so they can make off-center shots a little bit better by making the, uh, the walls around the edges, the off-center bits, a little bit thinner, more reactive, yardy blah. Um, still got the wave technology. Still got that little thing in there. Um, a lot smaller now uh, for this year than it was uh, last year. Redesigned, trying to give the exact same amount of performance but not take up so much space and so much weight so they can obviously redistribute that. You've got the same carbon composite, lovely crown. Let's see if I can get this in here because it'll be a quite an, look at that. Oh, it does look nice. I do like how the um, carbon composite heads uh, do seem to have the carbon weave on top and they blend it in. Um, glossy, um, they come away from the blue. Um, Mizuno with ST190 last year, they have got to a point of where they had, I think really Mizuno had to think about how uh, they decided to choose to color their drivers. Um, the 190, they went all black. And I mean, apart from the Mizuno fanboys out there who loved obviously Mizuno Blue, I like Mizuno myself. Um, wasn't a great fan of the blue, blue drivers, yeah. Um, but they went all black, and it was a great decision because sales went up, blah, 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 blah. So it's a marketing machine at the end of the day. So anyway, 12 gram weight right at the back for helpfulness, forgiveness for off center strikes. I got this in multiple different shafts because I just wanted to test, to be fair, length, stiffness, bend profile, weight, etc. Um, but I ended up sticking with my current uh, custom fit shaft, which is in the G at the moment. Um, the Atmos Torspec um, 6X, but it's an inch shorter. I don't like shafts too long. Um, right, so when it comes to, that's the tech. Looks wise, they have got this little bit down here that they, they kept. I don't know if you, can, you can't really see it very well. On the edge, um, they don't just have the face and then they start with the crown. They kind of round it. And with the glossy top to the crown, when you look down by the ball, it gives the illusion of loft. It makes it look more lofty than it really is. But the look of the thing, it does, I tell you what, I, you, I don't know if you can really see on here, but it, is, it does look a very, very nice driver. I mean, it's... It's a gray, very dark gray um, face, but it's it's a good looking thing. Um, feel, stroke sound. I mean, I hit this outside um, to see what, obviously I got a lot of shots indoors, etc. and you get like the, the noises bounce around the room. So it'd be nice to sort of pop outside. And you know what, there is a pleasant little, I wouldn't say ting, there's a crack to it. It's not like the classic noise that you get from a carbon composite head, but it's a little bit of punch to it. And it is a driver, so obviously you want it to try and go out there as quick as and far as you possibly can do. And having that little extra little bit of noise sometimes gives the illusion or the feeling of a little bit more power. But it does sound very, very nice. It looks very, very nice. This is an evolution for Mizuno. It is not a revolution. Mizuno are very, very keen to say and understand that this won't make your last drive go 400 yards longer. It is an evolution to something which they stumbled on last year to try and make the very, very good performing driver, which last year, the 190, you could argue was slightly unforgiving from certain areas. 
Now they have made the 200, they've made it better, they've made it more forgiving basically. It's still gonna be as good out the middle as any driver out there is. Um, but Mizuno this year just trying to help with a little bit of um, helpfulness, forgiveness. So when you guys test it, hit it, and you don't hit the middle every time, we all don't, it's a little bit more helpful. Anyway, let's go hit some balls inside, do lots of testing, and um, see how well this performs. Mid spin, remember, this is for the masses, not me, absolute lowest spin ever. Nine and a half head, down to seven and a half, up to eleven and a half as well, but that's how I have it set up anyway. Let's go see how it performs. Now, after hitting so many shots, I've lost count. Um, I like doing a large data set. With the new ST200, normal one, um, let's go out straight delve into the numbers. Now, let's go pop to the numbers transition screen. Vroom, there we go. <laughs> and let's go see how, what should we do first? We do ball data first, and let's go see how we got here. Right, so as you can see, lots and lots of shots. Scrolled up the top, just run out of room. Um, on average, ball speed, this way, yeah. Uh, 161, so 160.8. Um, we'll see what club head speed. I've just dialed the speed up a touch for 2020. I'm trying to get the old dog, get some speed back. Um, launching at 13 degrees. Now this has got a lower sweet spot than last year's 190. So the people who do gravitate slightly towards the lower part of the head may see a little bit more of an advantage from the 200. Anyway, launching at 13, which is healthy. It's This is down to seven and a half degrees. So um, yeah, trying to manage my spin. Spin at 215 now. This is the medium, if you want to think about it, this is the medium head for spin. And it's spinning up at uh, two one. You can see the variation there, depending on my strike. It goes from like two four um, down to fourteen hundred when I miss hit it slightly. Now you can see all the different shots on there. I have got some variation of different ones. So you can see some go left, some go right, some go up. The problem is obviously the faster you swing and the further the ball goes, um, the dispersion wedge gets bigger. So if you're like three degrees off at 10 yards, it's not gonna be a lot, but if you're three degrees off at 300, obviously that dispersion is bigger. But yeah, that's physics, you guys know that. Um, but on average it's carrying at 283. Now that for a normal, this is the bog standard normal head that everybody is going to fit into. It is carrying 283, it is very, very healthy. This is not the ultimate low spin, absolute maxed out 200G that would suit me. It is the one that would probably suit me more for if I was looking into potentially control forgiveness a little bit to control dispersion in that way. But then again, I'd probably go to the 200G and then just move the weights back, but different story. Um, but for the mainstream, this will be suiting mainstream. It's a slightly higher spin profile than the G. The head um, loft sleeve will, will move from this nine and a half or 10 and a half degree as standard. It goes down to seven and a half degrees up to potentially 12 and a half degrees with a 10 and a half degree as well. So the movement of loft that you've got is brilliant. Um, because this the CG slightly lower on this face where people hit it in the middle, we'll see a slightly higher launch again, will help increase uh, initial launch angle and stuff like that. So again, that's only one great thing for the fitters. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's peaking up at 36, but you can see the range changes depending on how I hit. I'm only 1.6 yards on average, but then again, you can see there, but I do move around and I'm not perfect by no stretch of measure. I had some very, very good shots on there, um, but also had some rubbish. What was the longest one I had there? It was at 322 on that screen. I can't see from obviously further up. Um, that's the thing about how, having hitting so many. But let's go to club data and you can see. So club head speed, 113. So normally I was about 110, 111 last year. Dialed it up just a couple. Um, but um, yeah, very good efficiency. I mean, I, I'm hitting slightly better this year, you could argue. Um, 4.8, the problem is my with my amount of dynamic loft that I normally want to deliver and how much I hit up on the golf ball, etc. It's always going to be difficult to get absolute maxed out um, efficiency. But yeah, so hitting basically five degrees up, Slightly across, slightly open by 0.7.4, but again, you can see I vary very slightly. 18.6 um, degrees dynamic loft, six mil toe, one mil high on average. But again, you can see that my strikes vary a little bit. They do, they wanna to go toey. 
Um, but the interesting thing, because I normally want to hit high toe, but I'm a bit of a tracer. I trace the CG, and I'm normally, say, however many toe, six mil, eight mil toe, whatever it would be, but I'm normally like six to seven to eight or nine mil high. But it's interesting how I want to gravitate slightly lower when it comes to trying to find the sweet spot. Now, what I, there is, I mean, you see the shots that you got on here. So if you see all the, the strikes that I did, we'll pop them across there, you can see. I mean, they're all darted in and around that kind of toey mid, couple of high, but all around there. Um, again, that's carry 291, um, slightly higher uh, clubbed speed on that one, 114.6, but 164 ball speed, very, very healthy. Um, and that is carrying. That really, really is such a good shot for carry. Now, one thing I wanted to pop on here, which one is it? Quite an interesting one. Here you go. Um, Club speed 113.9, so back into the word 13s again, but 292 carry. But look where I got that one from. It's zero mil low, four mil toe. Zero mil low, normally, um, I mean, face angle's quite good, 0.4 at the inside, face open to a path by 0.1. But um, hitting 4.7 up, la, da, 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 da. but what it's doing, look at the spin, that is spinning amazingly well, 1794, this is supposed to be the mid spin. Um, what surprised me, just how necessarily, you don't have to hit high on the face to get that. And that's what I was exceptionally, um, I would say amazed with, because obviously it's just, it's just transition necessary where you want to put um, the center of gravity of the of the club on the face relevant to where you want to put that weight at the back. But anyway, that's my little bit of a look at how this thing performs. Conclusion of it very quickly would be performance wise, it performs as good as anything else out there on the market, as good as any of the Mavericks or the Sims or anything else like that. Um, you'll be hard pressed to find any manufacturer to make any driver nowadays that performs anything better than anybody else. What you will find that the, the, that individual person might find a driver that suits into their individual spin profile and launch conditions slightly better. But that's the custom fit inside. That's the um, not so much necessarily. It could be just down to the ability of the fitter more than anything else. Um, but with Mizuno making three heads now, it enables them to specifically um, target the individual golfer for the three separate heads, not two, where they had to kind of blend, but now not no more. Um, one thing I do want to add into this, which is a little bit different to the likes of the Sim and the likes of the Maverick, which will arguably be the two most bought drivers of 2020, um, because of their obviously the marketing machine, which is tailor made in Callaway, and they do very very well at doing that. Is this um, is retails quite a distinctly lesser amount than the likes of the Sim and the Maverick, yet it performs exactly the same, as good as anything else out there. Now, will this perform as good as potentially it could be for me? No, because that's why they make the G, and that video will come after this one. Um, but from the standard head, which is going to suit the masses, um, performance-wise, I can't fault it at all. Look-wise, I would say it's, a again, an evolution to the 190. Um, the sole, necessarily, what you think there. Well, again, that's just down to personal preference. And then, obviously, yeah, when it comes down to look by the ball, with that toe end, which dips down a little bit, doesn't um, it just makes it look as though is the, well, the club's not looking left all the time? Sound is it a sound as the absolute best one out there, Maverick? I don't know. Um, if I was to be honest, I pref possibly prefer the Maverick as it's the possibly the best sounding club everyone has ever anyone has ever made. The difference in price between this and a Maverick. And I'm talking about a slight difference in ting level. Um, you guys, you're, I mean, it's your hard-earned money that you're parting with. Um, you test it. You get custom fit for it. Make sure you get custom fit with a decent fitter that can fit you into different ones with all the different shaft options they've got, all the different lengths, ideas. Um, just That's all I can say. Just go give it a go. Um, I'm now going to do the 200G, then the 200X. So that one's coming after this one. So I hope you liked it. Anyway, if you did, click the like button. Um, and the, down there, subscribe, little red button. Next to it, bell icon. Click.
that'll let you know when I upload the next one, the G and then the X. The X is gonna be funny because it's very light. But um, yeah, guys, hope you liked it and we'll see you again soon.